Seven Signs of Fishing to Watch For. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. So, not that long ago, a friend asked me to take a look at a piece of email they'd received to confirm that it was legitimate. It wasn't. It was a good attempt, though, and it probably fooled many people into clicking through and potentially handing over sign-in information to a crook. I want to review some of the signs in this specific email that I looked at that flagged it as fake. So here's the email. You can see it's something about having been granted access to a secured document file. It's got an Excel icon for the document. It's got an open document link. It's got the Microsoft logo, all that good stuff. I blurred out a few things for privacy, but the blurred out name in the FYI data received from subject is someone that my friend knows and has corresponded with in the past. So it looked like it was from a real person. The blurred out name and email address in the from line ending in at akc.org matches my friend's contact. And of course, the blurred out to line is the same email address as the sender. The email appears to contain a document shared by the sender for my friend to open and read. The icon, like I said, suggests it's a spreadsheet. Since it includes the Microsoft logo, maybe it's shared online in OneDrive. And of course, the email closes with an official looking business-like signature from the sender. There are many lies in this message. Here are some clues you can use. I want to point out first, though, that these are clues. These are not absolute indicators. All of them can occur in legitimate emails as well. It's also worth noting that these clues are not unique to this specific phishing email. That's why I'm using it today. These are clues that you could look for in any email that you're questioning. Okay, number one, lack of preceding context. By that, I mean, this isn't part of a discussion. This email came out of the blue. In this particular case, my contact, my friend, while they know the sender, they haven't spoken to them over email in months. There was no current conversation between the two. Like I said, the email came completely unexpectedly and out of the blue. Two, lack of included context. There's nothing in the message that gives it any context at all. You've been granted access to a secure document file. Great. Why are you giving me access? What does it contain? What am I supposed to do with it other than the implication of opening it? Lack of an informative file name. This one's kind of odd. Normally files have names that indicate their content, right? Spreadsheet.xls or first quarter earnings.xlsx or something like that. This one, S pound sign four zeros five four eight slash FC five A. It looks like it's designed to be or to appear as if it's the beginning of what I would call a very uninformative name. It tells us nothing about the supposed document. Number four, the Microsoft logo without the mention of OneDrive. So Microsoft is not going to share you a link from OneDrive without explicitly promoting the fact that it's on OneDrive. Everything is a marketing opportunity and that it wasn't treated as such should imply that Microsoft wasn't really involved. Number five, the email wasn't to my friend. Like I said earlier, the email didn't show my friend's email address at all. They were BCC'd. The email appeared to be sent from someone to themselves. This can be a red flag. The entire box was an image. So this whole concept, this whole box that has you've been granted text and the document icon and the document name and all that kind of stuff was one single large image. Clicking anywhere would take you somewhere. Now, you might be thinking, well, if it's spam and it's a remote image, why was it showing the image? The image might have been shown because it wasn't remote. It was actually part of and came with the email. Or perhaps because my friend had the sender's address in their contacts 
as an always allowed images. This is in fact one way that spammers try to bypass spam filters. A legitimate email is typically a combination of text and images, not just a single image that looks like text. Normally, in an example like this, only the open document button would be clickable. Number seven, the destination was bogus. Given that the email looked like a Microsoft email because of the logo, linked to a Microsoft document, the Excel-like icon, implying that it would be shared on a Microsoft property like OneDrive, we would expect the link to go to a Microsoft-owned domain. However, hovering anywhere over the image showed that the destination URL was no such thing. I'm not going to include the actual domain, but it basically boiled down to the equivalent of some random numbers dot some random service dot com, where some random service dot com is actually a domain that I know I own. Sometimes spammers actually own those domains, but more often than not, it's someone else's domain that has been hacked and put into service for this kind of thing. Again, I have to point out that some of these clues occur in legitimate email. And some, like a bogus destination, are more strongly indicative of a problem than others. The important takeaway is this. All of these clues were visible. It took just a little time to look at and think about the message before acting on it. The presence of multiple clues strongly implies that, yeah, this was a phishing attempt. Now, there are still more clues that you can look for. They're just not as obvious. They are kind of techy. One of the first things I did when my friend asked me about this email was to look at the headers you don't normally see. They were much longer than what's shown here. The results were difficult to interpret and to my casual eye, inconclusive at first glance. However, we have tools for this kind of thing. mxtoolbox.com has an email header analyzer. Copy and paste the headers from an email message, and it'll perform several interpretations and validations on the information. Most tellingly, in this example, near the top of the results was this. DMARC was not compliant. SPF was aligned. SPF was not authenticated. DKIM was aligned, but DKIM was not authenticated. Yeah, that, like I said, is a bunch of tech gobbledygook. I get it. To grossly oversimplify, SPF is an email standard that defines whether a specific email server is authorized to send email on behalf of a specific email domain. DKIM is an email standard that confirms whether an email message was sent by the email domain it claims to be from. This message failed both tests further cementing our evaluation that it was spam. So why didn't spam filter catch it? Well, there are two reasons. For one, many of the clues listed above are completely subjective. A spam filter won't know that you do or don't know someone, whether or not you've been having conversations with them recently or whether the message itself contains reasonable context. These are all things only you and I can judge when we take a look at the message. Second, many of the clues, even, perhaps even especially, the SPF and DKIM failures are common even in legitimate emails. This is part of what makes fighting spam so excruciatingly difficult. Suddenly enforcing one factor, say DKIM compliance, would work only if every single email server and service implemented it completely and correctly all at the same time, and even then there would be side effects. While it's possible in theory, in practice, it's just not happening. It's rolling out slowly-ish, I'll call it. And that means that recipients are and are not always paying complete attention to the results of those tests. So what happens if you click? Messages like this one actually have a very simple goal. They look legitimate. They promise something, they include a link to click on, and when you click on that link, you're taken to what appears to be a 
a sign-on page, somehow related to what was promised. The sign-in page itself is completely bogus. It only collects your sign-in credentials, which are then passed on to the hacker. Once the hacker has your login credentials, of course, they can change the password, lock you out, use your account to impersonate you, hack into your other accounts, perhaps including your bank, and cause other, what I refer to as mayhem. So in our example above, clicking on the open document link would probably have taken you to something that looks like, but is not, a Microsoft account sign-in page. If you had entered your Microsoft account credentials, you would have been handing them over to a crook. The bottom line here is actually really, really simple. Think before you click. I listed many clues you can use above that don't require complex header analysis or any kind of technology. All you need to do is pay attention. Unfortunately, I get it. Day-to-day -day is rushed. It's really easy not to take the time to pay attention. It's just too easy to simply glance at the message and click without even further understanding what's about to happen. Don't be that person. Think first. The time you take to do so, to think about what it is you're looking at, will be well worth it compared to the possibility of having your account compromised. For updates, for comments, for links related to this topic and more, visit askleo.com slash 136589. I'm Leo Notenboom, and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.